these are the success stories you need to highlight, right? This person who you were, you're speaking about, you know, these are the stories that you don't always hear. You know, a, a lot of people out there, if you span all the, the platforms on social media, it depends where you are, but like some people are for them and they say they're great. And some people are like, look, it's for the bad kids. Option B, like, don't even consider, like, don't do that. Go be a YouTube, like do something yeah. else. And it depends where you are and what, what platform you are. But those stories need to be shared with other people. I'm a big believer of sharing people's success stories because people could say, oh, wow, you know, yes, I have to put the time and effort into it. And I maybe it's a niche or something like, like he did. Mm -hmm. But I can be, I can get into something like this. I can start my own business. There's so many of those stories out there and we don't display them enough. All right. And think about it. Andrew Brown, you started a company supplying construction tools and you didn't have any experience in construction, mm -hmm. right? That's another success story in itself. I, and I'll give you my sort of just, you know, just little background. Like my first year when I did this, like literally we didn't make any money the first year because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And I'll just right. be, you know, open and honest with you, but it took a little time to figure it out. Right. right. I know I had the passion, but I didn't quit. And I just kept working and, you know, I had coaches and I was able to, to, to move up, you know, within the company, obviously expanding out the company, but like you got to start somewhere and never give up. You just got to keep pushing forward and keep, like you said, Fine tuning your skills, be a sponge, keep learning, testing, trying everything. And just don't give up. That's the number one piece of advice. Yeah, I think that's the key right there is that especially in this culture, right? You, you, you said it, but not a lot of people do it anymore is they try one thing. It doesn't work the first time or it takes like a month, right? And they're all oh, this is stupid. I'm going to go try something else. And then they go and try something else. And they do it for a month or two months. This is dumb. I'm going to go try something else. And then you're five years down the road and you tried 20 different things and you're the exact same place where you started, right? Mm -hmm. It's hard to keep on doing something, especially if that something is hard. Like for you, not making money the first year, that's hard. Davis and I know that, right? We've been working on this for three years and we we have made money, but not, a, not enough to live on, right? Not enough right. to do this full time. Right. And but for the first year, year and a half, almost two years, we didn't make a dime. Right. And it, a day in and day out, you got to do it right. And if more people had that mentality, then I frankly, I think the world would be a different place. But especially the trades and especially some of the families who who have that struggle, right? Of Just one thing to another, jumping next, jumping next. So for that person out there who is thinking about going into the trades, right? They're they are in this position like you were. They want to do it. They just don't know how to do it. What would you say to them? Well, the, the first piece of advice is what trade do you want to be in, right? It's like, are you sure you want to be an electrician? Have you kind of done the, some sort of research? And once you figure that out, obviously, is there anybody in your own sort of network that is an electrician? Is there somebody who's a welder? Is there someone who can introduce you to someone who has years of experience? That would obviously help as well because you can speak to that individual and they can sort of guide you sort of in the path, you know, union versus non-union. Like there's a lot of different uh, aspects, you know, some sort of apprenticeship of some sort. What does trade school look like? That type of stuff. It also obviously depends where you are. Like, are you 45 and trying to say like, I, you know, I'm not, I don't want to be an accountant anymore and then I want to shift to, to being a tradesperson. So that's maybe a little bit different conversation as opposed to maybe someone a little bit younger in their journey, because that first obviously handful of years, you're not going to make oh. the money that you want. You know, it's going to take a few years to get to get to that point, but doing your research, as I said before, if it's some sort of organization like the American welding society would be the, with the example that I would bring back up of working with them, taking their assessment, and, you know, working through sort of their, you know, sort of behind the scenes where you can you can speak to individuals there and they can sort of guide you throughout that process. So some of this stuff is going to be doing your own legwork. Some of the other stuff, obviously, is working with the right people, because if you're working with the, the wrong people, obviously, they might 
put you in a path that's not right. So you need to be weary of who you work with. But just being a sponge, being open and willing to learn. And, you know, if you're, you'd be more willing at that point, hopefully, to take something that would give you the opportunity to grow, right? Maybe the money is right not here at this point, but it will be after a few years, but you're in a good training program. You're in a good company that's good core values, something like that. You know that there's growth opportunity. Just a, putting yourself in that position mm. will set you set yourself up for hopefully future success. Yeah. I mean, Andrew just mentioned it. Walker, you mentioned it before, right? It's the hard work and, and understanding that, you know, Andrew didn't make money his first year. Walker and I did it for the first year and a half. And then, like Andrew just said, again, he reiter- reiterated on the point. You may not make the money that you want to make right out of college or right out of technical school or right out of high school, but that's okay that you're young. Be willing willing to go do the hard work because I guarantee you, if you go do the hard work, you're going to stand out on a job site. People will notice you. You will get opportunities. You will get an opportunity to get a bonus or a raise and continue to move up because let's just be quite frankly – We're desperate for people that have an initiative to get after it, to use their head, that want to problem solve, that want to have it. And so another thing that I was really thinking about was that process, you know, it's really easy to just say, go do hard work, go figure it out, go work hard, go have determination. A book that I've read, Walker, we've had him on the show, Ken Coleman, Paycheck to Purpose. It talks about in his book, there's different stages of what it looks like. He is all about helping people in every aspect, in every career, get to what their dream job is. And a lot of people, again, are fine with just going to work, getting a paycheck. That's fine. That That's kind of what I think the older guard is, that older adage of we just want to show up and get a paycheck. But from the research we've done, Andrew, Walker and I have really started to see, and especially to me, I want to I want to have values that relate to the company I work for. I want to know that I'm a part of a team. I want to be valued, even if my opinion is not exactly right or wrong, but someone's heard me. I want to know that I have buy-in to what's going on, right? And if I didn't, I probably wouldn't be working for the company that I did, but I do. And so I'm getting these opportunities, 26, I'm not a superintendent yet, but I'm getting an opportunity to lead a construction site. I never thought I would at this age, but I'm getting that opportunity. And so there's a there's always a route. There's always um, someone that's willing to help. And so for someone younger, I would just encourage them again to, to, to reach out to someone. Like, you know, we're trying to get our word out. We're trying to help get Andrew's word out about the need to get into our industry. But it's hard because, you know, we only get – we're only on LinkedIn and we're, we're it's very limited. And so maybe – Sometimes somebody will hear this message, right? That's in, in a high school and someone will get, be able to hear this podcast and understand and are willing to reach out. But, you know, I just, I think there, there's a way to do it. And if you're listening and you're the younger audience, just be willing to reach out, be willing to go take that next step. There might be some obstacles that you don't know, but again, the construction industry, if you have hard work, if you're willing to work as a team member, if you're willing to be dedicated to what you do, the path for success is just unbelievable. I mean, across the board, everything sort of what you said about, you know, again, about hard work, you know, it's about, you know, staying the course, right? I think you said this where people jump ship, you know, it's getting hard. Uh, I don't want to do this anymore. And you see that it doesn't it depends whether it's the trades route or if you want to do something in the gym or like, it's got hard. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not doing this. The people that stay the course end up winning. I believe. Yes, they'll fall on their face. Yes, they'll they'll test and try. But it's the people that keep showing up. It's the people that keep keep working through all that pain and figuring it out. That's not for everybody. Because people will be very happy just collecting a paycheck and working for a company that, you know what, doesn't really have the values that I have. I don't care. I'm just getting a paycheck. But there are people who believe, and I believe too, want the recognition, want to work for a construction company that has core values. Because I believe that not everybody, you know, depending on sort of what generation you look at, it's it's not just about wages. Because I can make money somewhere and be miserable. I don't want to go to work every day, but, you know, I'm getting a good paycheck as opposed to, you know, I'm looking around. Everybody's just like me. And and, and it is this, this, 
good core values here. And what we're building is amazing, right? And, 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 and the stuff that we're building, we're, we're building a school, not just we're building a school, we're building a school for education. We're building a bridge to get people to work. We're building a building for people to, to get jobs, to have jobs in, in, in that building. Like that would get me excited. As opposed to, yeah, you know, I get a couple more dollars somewhere else, and I'm just not happy going to work. So I think the recognition part is is a big piece. The core values is a big piece. People are looking for more than just a paycheck today. That's right. That's right. Yeah, Andrew. I mean, yes, completely agree. And again, I think you hit it yeah. on the head. Let's switch gears a little bit about more about your journey and what you've experienced, right? Because. I think we found too that a lot of people might want to be entrepreneurial or they might want to start their own thing and do their, maybe they are an electrician or are a plumber or are a welder. And they're like, you know what? I want to go and do my own company. So what for you who went off and started this, what was your biggest challenge and what would you tell that person who wants to start their own company? Hey, I wish I knew this before I went into business for myself. 100% to get a coach, get somebody who hopefully is maybe in your industry or a little bit further ahead, Mm -hmm. or it doesn't necessarily have to be your industry, but somebody who's extremely knowledgeable in an entrepreneurship type of role. This is one thing, and and I'll, I'll stress this, this is one thing I didn't do when I was younger, and I'm kicking myself because I have people today, I have mentors today, that have helped me through this. You can't say you're a self-made man because there are people around you who have helped you. Yeah. I think that's BS because it's people who have helped you along the way. Yeah. You just choose to recognize them or, or you don't, right? I always say that there's a lot you know and there's a lot you don't know and the stuff that, don't, that you don't know hurts you. Mm. And I can say with confidence that there's a lot I didn't know. You know you're coming in from, let's say, working um, for another company and then all of a sudden you're you know, working for yourself, it's exciting. Oh my God, it's the first year. And then all of a sudden, you know, you, you got you got payroll, you got taxes, like there's all different things you have to learn about the business. And and you need to align yourself with good people, with good accountants, with people that obviously you work with and, and so on and so on. So you need to obviously surround yourself with the right people. And going back to to the coach, the coach is one of the most important things for me. The game changer for me was joining a group called Vistage. Vistage is a group of CEOs around the country. I, I think it's like 15, 20, 20 30,000 members in this group. Wow. And it's executives and CEOs. And I meet with 20 different CEOs each month. That's cool. We have a meeting, there's a speaker, there's a chair, there's someone who's really established, who's a chair, is also one of my mentors. And we discuss things about business. And what's great, is that the individuals in this group are not in my industry. So I can pick up things from other industries that I never would have thought, wow, that works in our industry. Wow, that's amazing. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need to do is getting into those groups and masterminds, coaches and, 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 and testing and trying and learning sort of different things. You're going to get smacked down. But the thing is, you need to get back up. You know, businesses in the first five years, a good percent, I don't know what it's a high percentage. I don't want to give the wrong percentage, but it's a high percentage of companies, they go under. Because people just don't realize that, what what did I get myself into here? You know, this is not for me. I want to go work for someone else. I don't want to take all that stuff. When you, a lot of times when you're a business owner, it doesn't stop when, during business hours. You know, at nighttime, too, you're always thinking about it. You're always processing it like you're on vacation. Like, I never used to take vacation when I was younger because I felt like I had to work. And then I got older. I'm like, this is not going to work. I need a work-life balance. And that took right. some time. Right. So I think for me, doing that on top of, for us, what we brought into our organization is called EOS management. EOS management allows you to run your business. It's, it's a blueprint for your business. It gives you vision. It gives you core values. It gives you uh, leadership. It, it tells you how to run your meetings. And you talk about, you know, trajectory changes in our business. I mean, like it just put us on a whole different sort of path. That's cool. And I didn't know that. I didn't know about this until I joined this group. Yeah. I didn't join business. I never would have known. 
So that stuff, like it's it's an eye opener to really get involved in these organizations to help you uh, grow the business. And do is that the first group you stepped into, or was there a coach beforehand? There's been coaches sort of kind of throughout the years, mm -hmm. but this this group is only in the last handful of years. Yeah, it's cool because. Andrew, it is what Walker and I are trying to provide right now. We're going through this group called the Next Gen Leadership Group and really meeting and getting getting serious about this next cohort coming in. It's how do we help this next generation understand that we have to lead at an early age. We want to equip them with the soft skills, leadership skills, being able to handle conflict, how to lead up. The emotional intelligence side, right, that a lot of people don't have, personalities. Like there's just a plethora of things that we can help teach people but how do we help them understand, most importantly, that there's a person beside me, Walker Lott, Andrew Brown, and if I'm vulnerable and telling someone this is what I'm going through, a lot of other hands are probably going to raise, and a lot of people might even come up and say, hey, this is how I solved it, right? And that could be the breakthrough for Andrew Brown, for Davis Hammock, for Walker Lott, because I was willing to go to Vistage and meet a group of other guys that may or may not be in my industry that have a group that they come and meet and we're going to try and just brainstorm and how do we come together and learn and, and, and share the vulnerabilities and the struggles, right? Like it's really is, it's life changing and you get to learn and get to pick on these things and man, I got to get better in this area and I'm doing good in this area just from the stories of gauging people. So I, I love that that's what you did. And I would encourage anybody, not just in business, but also just in construction, go find a mentor, go find someone that you could just go pester and ask questions and understand what you're trying to do out of your career. And so, Andrew, man, you've given us a lot of, of great content, a lot of things that will help this next generation. I think this is one of the coolest podcasts of we've really centered this around how do we help the next generation. Yeah. So there's a lot of applicable tools here, Andrew. We, we thank you for that. So as we wind down, Walker and I always ask these two questions. My question is, if you're going to encourage someone to come into our industry, what are some qualities you think they should have? I think you need to be curious. I think you need to be open. I think you need to be self-aware. I think you just need to be a sponge. You need to be willing to be open so you can take sort of the information from people so you can sort of get to that next level. It, it right. requires discipline. It requires showing up every day. So people don't show up. Hmm. You got to show up every day, even though it, it might... It might be sort of painful that, you know, in the beginning stages, it's hard. You got to keep showing up, keep showing people that you're, you're willing to do the hard work because that goes a long way, especially somebody up top or, or management's looking at that and looking at their, their individuals. And this is, this individual is showing up and guess what? He doesn't care what the job is. If you tell him to go do this, he'll do it because he's humble and he's good. He's a good apple. He's, he's, he's good for the organization. Or yeah. him or her. So those type of qualities, I feel, would be would be helpful. I love that. I mean, not to walk or break into your time here, but I mean, I, that's who I am. I'm curious. I'm a sponge, and I want to be willing to do whatever my superintendent asks of me, right? And, you know, I, I'm not a superintendent. I'm not the best employee ever, but I always show up, and I'm curious. If you can do those two things and then add on the fact that you're willing to go do it with a good attitude, Andrew, I mean, that's that's, that's great advice. Yeah. I think the being aware, too, is huge. Aware, you're right, because especially in today's world, there's so much social media, there's so much distractions, there's so much me, 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 right? That not a lot of people want to look inwardly anymore. And if you get corrected or if someone's like, Hey, you, you could do this better. Right. Some people don't take that as well as they should. Some people are going to be like, well, you know, what do you know? Or they'll rat it off and they won't listen to it. Right. right. But that's corrective feedback. That's how you get better. Right. And, and the more you can take that the more you can look inwardly and say, you know what? I can, I can do better in these areas. The, the higher you're going to go, the faster you're going to succeed. And the more that you're going to enjoy what you do because yeah. you are good at it. Yeah. But Andrew, as we, like David said, second question is wind down. If you could go by, go back to your 20 year old self, right? Maybe even before the, the nine 11, the story that you were telling us about, 
and you could tell your 20 year old self something that you knew right now, what would it be? I would go back to, to even before that, when I was uh, sitting down trying to figure out sort of the college thing mm. that, Hey, there's another option out there that it could take you down a different path, but you know, you have the discipline and the will. You just need the skill mm. and that could be taught, but I have the will. And if I can go back to that, that, you know, that individual be like, Hey, you know, yeah, shake them up. The college thing is, 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 is one direction, but there, there is another direction here. It probably would have been probably you and I would be having a different conversation because I'd probably be in construction, some sort of That's awesome. trade. Be honest with you. That's awesome. Yeah. Andrew, man, this has been awesome. I think That's you've awesome. given anyone listening incredible skills and advice as to what you need to be in the skilled traits. I think this is probably one of the most concentrated how to get in the trades episodes that we've had, which is yeah. awesome for anyone listening who's, who is interested in that. And we've had people reach out to us about it. And so if, if someone wanted to reach out to you and, and ask you more about this, how could they find you? Yeah. So a few different ways I'm on LinkedIn under Andrew Brown. Um, if you want to talk about the skill trades or even something in the tool business, I could talk shop any, any day of the week. You can also email me at Andrew at toolfetch.com. Find me on YouTube under Toolfetch or TikTok under Andrew Brown. So I'm just kind of scattered around on different platforms. But I'm always open and willing uh, to talk to anybody to try to help them out and try to guide them uh, into that trades path. Awesome. Andrew, man, thank you again. Seriously, we truly appreciate it. This is, this is awesome. Thanks, Likewise. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys.